Welcome to Genomi Club, brought to you by Genomi Australia. We will be showcasing different genomic machines and accessories to enhance your sewing experience, covering a variety of topics, including quilting, dressmaking, and embroidery, with handy tips and tricks along the way so that you can get the most out of your Genomi machine. For more inspiration, please like and subscribe, or you can check out our website at genomi.com.au. Now let's get creating. This month, we will be looking at the Bias Tape Guide and Belt Loop Folder. I will be sewing on our CoverPro 3000P, which is one of our CoverPro models that is currently available. And this is a handy little guide that actually has two functions. Now, like all of our um, blister pack um, accessories that you get. You do get the um, instruction guide that comes in the packet. So there's information on the back of the package that explains the width that you'll be cutting either your bias or your strips for your um, belt loops. And then inside this um, little cardboard backing for the packaging is information on how to use um, the two parts of this guide. So we have the bias tape guide instructions here and then the belt loop folder instructions on the other side. There is step-by-step -step instructions here about how to attach this and then how to use it and how to prep your fabric because um, there is a little bit of prepping involved with this but it makes such a beautiful nice neat um, finish. So for anybody who's looking at um, an extra attachment, whether you be doing some crafty projects or you want to attach um, bias and ribbon onto, um, you know, some um, clothing or costumes, or say you've, um, you know, making jeans for all your kids and you have to make lots and lots of belt loops or something like that. Like there's, there's practical ways you can use this and also decorative ways. So we're showing you a couple of different options. So let's look at the actual guide today as well. So this is our guide here. Um, it is a bar that attaches to the front of the machine in front of the foot, and it has two sections to it. This one on this side is your belt loop folder. So it has um, a little section on it which actually allows the fabric that's going through to then fold under and I'll be showing this in more detail soon, um, to sew your belt loops. And then, I don't know if I move this one, I'll move it over a little bit. This one on this side is for your bias attachment. So the main difference between these two is the bias attachment one is completely flat, and if I just roll it over to this direction so you can see, the bias attachment one is completely straight-sided because it is just feeding one layer of bias or ribbon through it. Whereas the belt loop folder, you'll see it sort of kicks out at a very slight angle here. And that's to allow for, because this actually folds in under one raw edge of your belt loops as you're making them, and then stitches it down. So it is at a slightly different angle. There are attaching holes on here where it attaches to your machine. With the CoverPro 3000, you do get the two attaching screws as part of um, your standard accessories. And then you just follow the instructions in the um, packaging as to how you attach this. So just to give you a little guide here, a little show of how this actually works, is with the bias. So I've got some pre-made bias tape here that I've purchased. And that one, you just simply feed that through the guide. And then that will then feed under your foot and be stitched down and as a decoration. So you can use bias. I've also got some ribbon here, so you can feed your ribbon through. You could put sequins through here if you're making dance costumes um, or ball gowns or anything like that. You can even put rickrack. So as long as the width of this is the same width of the guide or smaller, which is the 12 millimeters, um, it will feed through. With the belt loop holder side, I'll just put this down and then I'll show you. So what you do is you cut a one inch strip of fabric and then you fold up and press about a quarter of an inch. So about six millimeters, you press up one edge. I need to go to the other end of this to feed it through. You then, once your guide is attached, you fold this and this will feed through. So my folded edge 
is on my left hand side for you guys <laughs> and I fold under the right hand side and just feed that in to start with and you can see there that as this feeds through it folds under that raw edge underneath and creates a perfect tube that is then stitched up here with my machine and stitches that into these um, belt loops here so you can see that it's got the cover stitching on the back and then on the front I don't know which one will be the better one to see I'll hold both of them so there's our cover stitching on the back and then if I turn it over to the front you can see our top stitching here you can utilize this with a um, two um, threads wide so I could just have my two outer needles in this these ones we've done with three threads and you can also use your top cover hem if you want a more decorative finish on the top of your belt loops or your strips that you're making so let's go over to the machine and I'm just going to talk a little bit about some threads and why you might get thread nets with your machine or why you would use them so I'm going to be doing some decorative stitching on this cover pro so I've chosen to use an embroidery thread now embroidery thread is typically um, either um, an acrylic or a polyester or a rayon and it has like a nice high sheen to it but that also makes the threads um, quite slippery if that's sort of the right way and sometimes when you're sewing I don't know how well you can see it if I hold it here right where the white is I think that'd be the best spot so sometimes when you're sewing this mach the thread will come up and then you'll end up with these loops you can sort of see it and then it will sort of like pull around the bottom of it and it will get caught so we have got these thread nets that you utilize and what you do is you just slide them over the thread and these will expand out to um, do your larger cones if you've got those or smaller spools you can also double them up so if you've got this is a very small spool of thread so I can double it over like that and then when this goes onto your spool stand so you can sort of see here that I've got my threads already with the thread nets on there and what that does is that when the thread comes out of here it just holds onto the thread so that if there's any sort of like um, uh, I always call it a kickback I don't know what it's called <laughs> but when you stop sewing and the thread then relaxes back a little bit it doesn't have the opportunity to spool around the bottom of your of your cone and then um, get caught and then it will break the thread so it just adds a little bit more tension around so anytime you're having trouble with um, sewing and the thread is um, looping too much when you're doing say embroidery or the thread is spooling around the bottom put on a thread net it solves so many problems so I'll put that off to the side and I'll show you about attaching this guide now we do have as we talked about there are the two guides that are on this one bar and on the front of your machine you have um, a left and a right double screw holes so depending on which guide you're going to utilize so for the belt loop folder you would put it on the left hand screw hole so that the guide lines up with your foot or for doing your bias you put them in the right hand so we're going to be doing some bias first so you take your two little screws that come with your machine and we attach these on here so what I like to do is I like to put them on until they're almost they're just they're tight but they're not um, overly tight yet so once you and they're still I've still got a little bit of movement here so then you want to come down to your foot and right on the front of the guide and it might be a bit hard for you to see but right on the front of the guide there is a little um, raised bar that you want to line up with the center mark on your foot or where your center needle position will be once you've got that lined up you can then come in here and we can tighten up our screws there to hold that in place now this little guide bar does sit a little bit above the needle plate here because that's to allow you to um, put your fabric in underneath it so it doesn't sit tight right there we then are going to take our bias and as I said this is pre-made bias so it is already folded under 
If you um, are making your own bias and cutting it, you th would then need to use, say, like a bias tape maker, take it to your iron and um, iron it in because it does need to, this one is a pre-folded bias attachment. So some attaching, um, when you, if you've got like the um, binder attachment for your overlocker, that one is, or for your sewing machine or things like that, that one you use single fold. So, um, sorry, you use flat bias and then it pre folds it as it feeds it in. This one is already a full pre-folded bias. It's all a little bit confusing, but there's, you know, different, <laughs> different ways that you can do it. So you just need to have that prepped. I've also got a little dress here that I'm just adding. Oops, I'll get it here. I'm just adding some trim around the bottom just to jazz up the dress a little bit and a couple of extra rows of stitching on there. So I have actually, oh yeah, you can probably just see it. I've drawn a line with a little chalk pencil where my bias strip is going to go. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to feed my fabric in underneath the guide. Then I'm going to take my bias strip, let me pull it all out. I'm just going to move my microphone because it's you know, covered up by everything. Hopefully it will be okay right there. So I've got my fabric in. I'm then going to take my bias strip and fold that, press that in there. I'm just going to utilize the point of my scissors to get it under. And we're going to move up. I just need to be able to manipulate it to start with. So I'm making sure I can see my little chalk line just to the side of my foot here. And I want to start right on the side seam of my dress. So once I've got that lined up into position, I can then lower down my foot. Sorry, wrong side. Cut. I can then layer down my foot and I've got my pencil line lined up with the edge of my foot. My bias is just going straight through the guide and we can start to sew. As this is sewing, I am keeping my eye on that chalk line that I've got, making sure that it is sitting here on the edge of the guide so I can see my chalk line here and then it is running down this side of the foot. My bias tape I've just got loosely pulled in, um, pulling here in front of me just so that there's nothing that's, that's getting caught on. And it will be feeding in perfectly under the foot so that my stitches are sitting on that. So we're just gonna continue to sew this all the way around and then I'll show you the finished product. Now, when I get almost to the end here, where I am going to overlap, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to pull my needle threads through to the back. So I can just see a little loop here of my green threads and I'm just pulling them to the back. That just gets them out of the way. Then I'm going to trim off my excess bias here at the start. 
Okay, and I'm gonna keep an eye on this little tail that I've got here. I just need to stitch a little bit more. When I get to the point, I'm just gonna hand wheel this so my needles are in the down position because I want that fully secured there. Then I'm going to raise up my foot and I'm just gonna pull out from the guide this little excess bit of bias. I'm then going to trim that off so it overlaps by about, oh, about half an inch or so. Then it might be a little bit tricky to show, but um, I don't know if we wanna maybe zoom in on, yeah, this, this might be a better camera. So what I'm doing is there's this little tail, the excess tail here. I'm using my tweezers that come with your machine and I'm just going to come in under the foot and I'm just picking up that little tail and folding it under. Just folding the raw edges under and just using my tweezers to get it nice and flat and tucked in. So once I'm happy that that's there, I can then lower my foot again and I can finish sewing. And you wanna overlap your stitches a little bit. Once you've done that, we're gonna finish off our threads. Now the way to lock off the threads here, we're gonna hand wheel so that our needles are sitting up above our foot. We then are going to raise our foot. We then take our tweezers, pass it in under the foot and grab those three top threads and pull them out to the front. I'm then going to cut those off. Then what you want to do is you want to pull your garment out towards the back of the machine with a quite a firm movement because what it's going to do is it's going to grab all those threads that are on the top and it's going to pull them through to the back of your work. Then you can see here that all I've got left then is my um, lower looper thread and then I would trim that off. So you can see here that we've overlapped nicely and then all of our threads are on the back here and then I would just tie those off into a knot. You can sort of see here I've just tied them into a little knot. Um, you might be able to see there and then just cut off the excess. So then there we have this pretty trim on the dress. And then I've just come in when I've done this other one and I'll probably do the same on the bottom here. I've just stitched another row of the triple stitches, top and bottom. So this is beautiful for getting like your twin needling work um, or triple needle work that you would often do like on your sewing machine, but you can now do it with like your cover stitch machine and you get a beautiful decorative finish on your garments or anything you, you know, could be a quilt that you um, stitch this on, a rounded embroidery, anything. Okay, so that's our bias tape guide part of this guide. Let's just move all our threads back out of the way. Okay, so now we're going to swap over to the belt loop maker. So we're going to undo these screws. We're going to move our belt loop over now to our left hand screw holes. So you just have to remember the guide that you want to use obviously needs to be the one that's in front of where your foot is. Again, I'm going to tighten them up so they're almost tight. Then I'm going to adjust this to make sure it's right in the center of my foot. Then I can do a final tightening up. Okay. So with your belt loop, um, folder as I said the directions are on the packet and it has got cut your one inch strip of fabric and then you need to press under one side and it says about quarter inch six mil thereabouts anywhere from sort of like five to seven mil is where you don't need to be like sitting there with your measuring tape just press press it under as you go these can be cut on the straight um, of your fabric because um, whereas your bias strip if I can find a little bit of bias here again some out. So the main difference between something cut on the bias and cut on the straight is bias will have stretch to it because your grain lines are going diagonally on that. Whereas something that's cut on the straight 
is tight there's no stretch to it and you know for woven fabrics so with this you need to have your folded edge on the left hand side and to start it off I just fold in under the right hand side using my tweezers just to guide that in under the foot until it is just under where your needles are once we've got that all set up I can then lower my foot down and then get this all ready so it will automatically fold in under this right hand side and then do our stitching so here we go Again, I'm holding this quite loosely. I'm not tugging on it. I'm letting the machine pull it under. And I find it easier to sort of hold it at an ever so slight angle, so not right straight. I find I just hold it off to a little tiny slight angle off to the left hand side. I find that that then feeds it in the nicest. And again, you could use um, your two needles wide, so you could take out your centre needle, or I'm doing my triple stitch. again you could utilize your um, top cover hem if you wanted to so I've come to the end of my um, bar that I'm doing here I'm just going to pull my threads out to the back because I don't have to lock them off because it's at the end and then you'll see here I've got my belt loops made so I've got my stitching on the front we have the cover hem on the back so that is covering up the raw edges that are underneath there and then you would then cut this to the lengths required to make like your belt loops you could put them on a bag obviously most of us know belt loops that are on a pair of jeans or pants for where your belt goes we have also utilized I think we might swap back to this camera over here and we have utilized our belt loops for this project and made a whole heap of loops up and then we have um, adjusted I'm sorry, we have woven them all together. We've done coordinating um, colours. So we've got a pink strip and a silver strip. And we have then just woven those in and out from each other. Sort of see here. And then the next one would go under and over there. And woven our strips to the desired size we want. We've made this into a little pot holder and actually put insulated... Um, wadding in there but you could use this this would look gorgeous on the side of a bag so you make up um, get the pattern piece that you're working off and just make up your panel um, to the desired size and then cut out the shape um, I've also done I did a bit of a Google search on straps and straps are seem to be really in at the moment um, those um, so many um, like uh, women's uh, like bras have got extra straps on them or like even if you're making a tank top you can replace the sort of like strap pattern with a couple of straps but I found one and it was like this beautiful woven jacket so I thought I'd have a little try um, and I made this black um, belt loops with white stitching to give it a bit of a contrast and then I've woven them up together um, I've just made that into a little pillow because I wanted something just small that we could demo with um, but that is just some of the things that you, as I said, we can utilize this belt loop folder for decorative um, things or practical when you are actually making a garment. So thank you very much for joining us for Club this month.